Hello everyone, I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we come back to our CT console. We have got a lot of good reviews on the Correlate Clinically series and requests to increase the videos on radiology. So we are working hard to increase some DICOM discussions with our radiologists and surgery colleagues. So let us dive into today's scan. I will scroll through the scan first. You can note down the findings. Today's scan is relatively easy, but these are the scans where you miss findings. So let us see if you can get all the findings correct. As always, you can note down the phase. You can note down the findings as we scroll the scan. Like I have said, it is very important that you see the scans on DICOM with your radiological league. So that both of you understand each other's perspective and that in turn results in better patient outcomes. I'll scroll through again if you have missed any finding. Let me assure you that there are two or three major findings in this scan. Seemingly easy scan and that is where you miss findings. So have a look very carefully. And that's the coronal view. Right. So now we can start discussing the scan. So as always, like I say, don't only look at the major finding. I am sure most of you have realized by now that there is a lesion in the sigmoid colon. Yes, it is the sigmoid colon. That's why I showed the coronal cuts also. It's a redundant sigmoid. So the lesion is on the right side of the abdomen. We have had videos on tracing the colon. So if you have missed that video, you can have a look at that video. Okay. If you want to trace again, this is the rectosigmoid area. The sigmoid, right? See, that's how it's going. It's a redundant sigmoid. Then it's tracing back on the other side. You can see some fecalization, right? If you keep tracing this loop, right? That's the sigmoid. And there, it starts joining the descending colon. That's the descending colon, right? So as you go up, this loop is what we are tracing. And you see it anterior to kidney. That's the splenic flexure. To trace it again, splenic flexure, descending colon. That's the descending colon. As you go down, it will join the sigmoid in this area the sigmoid crosses it's a redundant sigmoid and there you start having the thickening with some perilesional stranding probable nodes that is the sigmoid then going down the rectosigmoid the rectum and that's the end okay so one finding is lesion in the sigmoid i will show it in the coronal also Okay, but some important findings that I don't want you to miss in this scan. 
like I said, it's fairly simple looking scan, but if you look at it closely, there is one very important finding and that is this lymph node, okay? This lymph node is very important in this scan because if the surgeon is not careful, this lymph node can be missed during surgery. Now, I will show you why this lymph node is important. Trace the vessels that are close to that lymph node, this vessel. And you will see that that is the vessel that is supplying the tumor area. Okay. I will go back again towards the root. This vessel. This vessel. This. This. That is the apical node. Right. And the vessels joining the aorta there. Right. So that is the importance of this scan. That vessel was very important to identify inferior mesenteric vein and artery. Okay. That is the inferior mesenteric vein and artery. Again, now I think you can appreciate it better. This is the node. Okay. And this node comes in the drainage area of the tumor because inferior mesenteric vein and artery right at the root, this node is present and this node needs to be removed with the malignancy. Okay. It has to come out with the specimen. Otherwise, there is going to be a nodal recurrence in the patient. So, that is one of the most important things in this scan. The second important thing is that there are some aortocaval nodes, okay? They're not significant in size, but there are nodes. Again, in the area which is very close to the inferior mesenteric pedicle, this is something that you should remember, okay? There are some groin nodes if we go down, but usually we don't see groin nodes, okay? In disease involving the sigmoid, upper sigmoid, okay? However, because of that pre-aortic node or the inferior mesenteric root node that is present, this patient needs to undergo a PET scan to see what all lymph nodes light up on the PET. This lymph node was positive on PET in this patient. So again, in coronal section, what you can do is you know that this is the area of sigmoid that is involved. We know that the inferior mesenteric vein crosses the duodenum. So, somewhere in this area, so this is the node, okay, the node at the root, right, and the node somewhere in the middle of the mesentery between the root and the lesion. So, this entire area of the colon needs to come out, okay, that is the most important part in this scan and that is the lymph nodes. One node is here, one node is here. And both these nodes need to come out. You can see the pedicle, right? The pedicle going down and the nodes along the pedicle. Node 1, node in the mesentery, both of these need to come out. And the landmark is the duodenum, the lower border of duodenum. This is the duodenum, okay? If you confuse some lesions in the duodenum in the axial scan, you can see that it is just folding of the duodenum. And that can be very clearly seen in the coronal scan. And that is why scans need to be seen on console so that you don't confuse findings. Some things on axial may look confusing. You match it with the coronal section. So again in coronal, if you want to see that is the sigmoid, right? Going across to the other side there, the sigmoid colon, right? And then joining the descending colon. This is the descending colon. So, sigmoid colon lesion and two appreciable nodes in the mesentery. When the apical node is involved, one of the clinical pointers where we do a PET scan to see if any other distant nodes are involved. Okay. And this is very important finding in this scan. So, a seemingly simple scan, but if you miss this node, the patient is going to have high risk of recurrence. The PET will light up when the patient starts chemotherapy. So, this is one node that you can't miss in this patient and that is why we are discussing this scan. So, 
these are some of the clinical pointers and that is the aim of the correlate clinically series. So I hope this point was very important and well emphasized in this video. Do tune in to our upcoming videos on correlate clinically series. Like I said, there is a lot of request for increasing scan discussions. So we will be coming up with more such scan discussions in future. Thank you.